Hello crafty friends, welcome to my craft room and to today's video. Today I'm going to make an interactive clean and simple card for you and I'm going to be using envelopes. I've been through my stash and dug out all my envelope dies and I've got my envelope punch board here and what I do today with, I'm going to use this one I think, this envelope die can be done with anything like this so if you've got any envelope die an envelope punch board or another method entirely of making little envelopes you should be able to do this so you don't need to rush out and buy this die first things first i'm going to cut an envelope from this pattern paper it's one-sided it's white on the other side so to make sure my envelope has its pattern on the outside, I'm going to have the pattern facing up and the cutting side of the die facing down. So there's our die cut. And when I make my envelope from it, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to have the pattern on the outside and white on the inside. But I don't actually want it to be white on the inside. I want it to have a little bit of colour. So I'm going to use spun sugar, I think, because it will be sympathetic with this colour. So just load up my brush with spun sugar. This is such a light colour, so you kind of do need to give it a good brush over the ink pad. And then go over the paper. And you can see it hardly looks like it's changed colour. But there is a little blush of spun sugar on there and I'm only doing it on this area because you won't see the other areas if I hold that against there you can see that it is colored now before I glue my envelope together though I want to create the interactive part of my card so I've got a panel here that is going to be once I cut it down I don't know, about an eighth of an inch smaller than my four by six inch card blank. Before I do anything else to this there, I want to give it a bit of texture. So all I'm going to do is add five embossed or engraved, whichever way you want to look at it, lines down the middle of my panel and this is going to sit on here like this about there so I'm happy with where that placement is and what I want to do now is draw through this slit here the slit that was cut by the die in my envelope and I've got a sharp craft knife here and I'm going to cut that slit out of this panel. It doesn't have to be neat or pretty as long as it's hidden entirely behind the envelope. So there you go. The slit is hidden by the envelope, but there is now a slit all the way through both pieces. Now, if you haven't got an envelope die that's got a slit in it, not a problem. I've cut this envelope with this die that hasn't got a slit in it. And all I need to do, I'll just fold these up to get the creases in and I can see what I'm doing. All I need to do, maybe draw a slit there. As long as it's covered by the flaps, you're good to go. And then you can use your craft knife, not only to cut the slit out of the card panel, but also out of the envelope itself. So it really doesn't matter how you make your mini envelopes, whether that's dies with slits, dies without slits, mini envelope punch boards or whatever method you can come up with. All you need to do is cut a slit there. And let's say that was going to go on here. That would go on there and that would hide the slits. Now I'm going to put my envelope onto my card panel. So I've put glue all over just this middle rectangle on the pattern side, because this is the back of the envelope. Well, it's the front of the envelope, but we're looking at the back, if you see what I mean. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm going to line that up there so the slits meet up. Just double check that that is straight and central using my ruler. 
and give that a good press down so it all sticks. Now I can add a tiny little bit of glue to the flaps and assemble my envelope like that. And I find that order of assemblage the easiest for me. So now for the interactive bit, I've made this a long thin tag with a rainbow or a part rainbow of thank yous on it. And that is gonna go in there and it's gonna poke through the slit in the envelope and the panel. And that's gonna be hidden there. So when the recipient opens their card, they can pull the tag thinking they've just got maybe a little letter or something there but it just keeps on coming and you end up with this fun little interactive element for the front of your card. I suggest assembling this before you add it onto the front of your card so that you know where to put your glue or your tape so that it doesn't interfere with this area here. You could attach it with craft foam if you wanted to add a bit of dimension. I'm just gonna run around the outside with some tape runner and I'll go above the slit of the envelope as well, just so that bit's well stuck down. And now we can pop this on top of a card blank. And there we have a very clean and simple interactive card. If that's too clean and simple for you though, you can add a little more pizzazz, let's say, to your interactive card. Here's one I made earlier in true a Blue Peter fashion. And all I did to this one was put an embossed panel and a frame around that panel. Now I didn't cut a slit in this one. You can do, but I just thought I would make a little tag here that says thank you. And that just sits nicely in there like that. So it's still interactive, but you haven't got that tag and this extra long surprise but I still think it works really well as a clean and simple interactive card. This one here I did cut the slit in so I took a panel I embossed part of the panel with a long thin embossing folder and then I did exactly what I did here by cutting the slits and I made a thank you tag again this one hasn't got a tag top it's just a rectangle with a hole punched in it and it works really well. I did this one in a landscape format just for a bit of variation and I added two smaller non-interactive envelopes either side for balance and to bring a bit more colour in. You can obviously use different colour papers, you could ink blend your own papers, stamp on them, do whatever you like. A top tip though I find is to use a thinner paper or a thinner card rather than you would normally use say for your card base or your panels because it's easier to fold the envelopes if you use a thinner paper. And this tag is shorter than this one because uh, with a landscape card there's not as much room beneath the slit as there is, say, in a portrait card. So you can get away with a longer tag in a portrait card. Before we go today, though, I thought I would show you how I made this long, thin tag. I've got a thank you stamp that fits within the width of the tag that will go through the slit in the envelope. So it's about three centimetres, this one. Obviously, your dies might be different. You might need a different width tag, but the principles are all the same. So I've got a piece of smooth white cardstock here. I've lined up my stamp so that it is parallel or the bottom of the text is parallel to the uh, bottom of the card. With this one, I used a different colour ink for each thank you, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just use black for simplicity. So stamp that. And then for this particular stamp, to get a nice gap between each of my stamps, my stamped images, I need to pull the card down by one and a half centimetres each time. And I just look at the top corner here and count one and a half centimetres down. For your 
tag, you might not want to put a sentiment on it. You might want to stamp an image or handwrite a message. Whatever works for you, really. And the card that you're making for whoever you're making it for. So then we've got a nice little stack of thank yous. And as I say, I'm cutting this down to three centimetres just because that works with the particular die that I used today. And I'm chopping the bottom one off because that was just to help me get everything lined up straight. And I've got this tag die and I've chosen it because it's got a nice top to it, this undulating top here, but it is wider than the strip that I want to cut. So I want to get that centralised and symmetrical. I think that's it. And I'm going to cut it in my Gemini Mini, but as I only want to cut the top of my tag, I'm only going to have that bit in the folder. I don't want any risk of chopping down here, so this is sticking out and that won't cut in the die cutting machine. And now we have a tag that's really long, you could pop a bit of thread or a bit of twine in there and then it will fit nicely in the slit you've cut and wiggle down. Sometimes it can be a bit of a pickle to get things to wiggle straight away, but there you go, it's gone all the way down now and the recipient can grab the tag by the string and pull out their thank you message. So there we have three interactive, clean and simple cards. I hope you've enjoyed the video and that it's given you some ideas of how to make an interactive, clean and simple card and maybe how to use some of the envelope dies or tools in your stash. If you'd like to see more from me, do subscribe and ring the notification bell and I will see you back here very soon. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.